one of the most effective ways to spread the word about your services and your programs and products is through promotional partnerships. I've talked about that in other videos, so to be sure to watch those for better understanding of that. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to reach out to potential promotional partners for you. So the first thing you've got to determine is what would you offer to a promotional partner's audience that they and their audience would find interesting and useful, right? And when I say offer, I mean particularly start with offering something for free so that it's easier for the promotional partner to say yes, because partners like to um, be generous to their audience rather than always feel like they're selling something to them. And so it's good to offer something for free, even though later you can then sell something to that audience. But first start with something for free. So I'm giving you here on this screen a list of things you could offer for, you could consider offering for free to other people's audiences. So you could offer a lecture for free or a training for free, and those could come in the, in the form of a teleclass or a webinar. If, it's, uh, if you do some kind of healing or meditation, you could offer a guided meditation. Um, you could offer a PDF. Um, oh, by the way, when, you, when I say lectures and trainings, it could be an audio format, uh, teleclass, webinar, live, or it could be something that they download. It could be a video. Again, a live video would be a webinar. Uh, or it could be a text. It could be um, an article, a white paper, okay, or even an ebook or even a mind map, okay? Uh, you could even offer worksheets or workbooks. You could offer a guide, step-by-step -step guide that gets similar to a, to a text here. Um, you could offer case studies that are useful and that will really help that audience uh, apply a, a case study when it's really useful is something that an audience could read or, or watch a case study and apply it and make their lives or their work better. Um, so you could offer an, an email mini course. Okay, so lots of other ideas, a, a group Q&A call or even one-to-one -one coaching, okay, or an online course, as it says down here. I will link to this article so you can look at these ideas. Basically, you might want to look at each of these ideas and score it for yourself on a scale of one to 10. How excited would you be to offer that thing for free, okay? And then the second question is, well, how would you phrase your outreach to that potential promotional partner in a way that um, is in service and, uh, and that is grace, graceful, gracious? I'm going to give you an, a document here that is going to give you many examples of how you can outreach. And some of these examples are real examples of what I've used or what someone else has used um, to, that, that were, was effective. Okay. So here's one example, and this is for reaching out to LinkedIn group owners. Now, why is a LinkedIn group owner uh, such an important influencer, potential promotional partner? Well, it's because LinkedIn group owners are able to e mass email the majority of their group members. So on LinkedIn, when I go to LinkedIn, for example, and I start typing in uh, the kind of audience that I want to reach, and you would do this for the kind of person you want to reach. What particular profession are they, or what particular interest do they have? My, my ideal audience would be coaches, so I'm going to type in coaches. I'm going to press uh, enter here to search. And then once the search box comes up, I would then click on groups, okay, groups. Now this is giving me LinkedIn groups where coaches are hanging out, okay? And so here in this group, there are 55,000 members. What this means, if I click through to this group, okay? And I click, go, to, go into this group, and then I'm going to click on uh, members here. I'm going to click on members, okay? And then I'm going to click on admins. And what this is showing me is that E.G. Sebastian, the owner of the group, is able to email with just a few clicks, most of the group members, LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn allows group members, uh, sorry, group owners to mass email the majority, it's something like around 75 to 80% of their group members with just a few clicks. So it's very easy for Aegis Sebastian to contact tens of thousands of people who uh, consider themselves coaches or many of them do anyway. So, so this is, would be an amazing promotional partner, right? So how would I reach out to someone like him? 
So this would be a potential email that I could write. How wonderful, e.g., that you've created the, the, the LinkedIn group for coaches. I hope you've really been in, interacting with them and enjoying that. I noticed that some of your group members have been discussing, and then I would talk about my topic. Now, I wouldn't do this until I've actually gone into the group and... Um, I'm gonna click back into the, the title of the group to get back to the conversations in the group. And then I would basically be um, reading some of these threads and seeing what they're writing. And if I find that group members are talking about my topic, my topic happens to be marketing, then I could reach out and say, hey, you know, I've been noticing that your group members are, have been discussing marketing. And given that likely many group members are needing some guidance on marketing i'd be happy to be a resource for anyone who asks you about it and i would include a short paragraph of my credibility indicators i've in the past three years i've coached um, i've had over a thousand coaching sessions with people on the topics of marketing many of them are professional coaches etc 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 right um and in fact i'm happy to offer again now this is where okay this is where you put in um, whatever you're willing to offer based on the listing that I put here, okay? Um, so that you can understand the power of this work. Regardless, though, I'm happy to help, so don't be shy about reaching out for any questions about this. Thank you for the work that you're doing in the world. Now, to make this email even better, you could actually go and, again, find, uh, find the group owner again. I'm going to go back and click on the me members and click on admins and click on the group member, click on the group uh, owner and look at, uh, I would basically click on, uh, okay, so here's the thing here. You, if you and the group owner both address the same topic, so basically uh, both he and I address marketing, then he would probably feel um, competitive to me and this email probably would not work well, right? That he would feel competitive, oh, I'm just competing, or I should say, if I were just saying, hey, I also help people gain clients, right? He would feel like, well, I'm just a competitor. Why should I help you? But if I come across it with a different topic that he doesn't particularly address with his audience, but that I do and I love addressing. So for example, I might say, hey, I really uh, want to address the topic of how to use Facebook to gain new coaching clients, right? Then he might be more interested, right? He might, because that maybe that's not something he addresses specifically. Um, so it's, it would be good to kind of look at this person's LinkedIn profile to see um, what that person addresses that, you, that, that, uh, that um, what, what you address that, that he doesn't. Um, or maybe there's some things that, um, uh, maybe there's some things that, that on his profile that you really connect with so that you could, you could use that kind of personal connection in your email. Does that make sense? So this is just one example, and there are so many LinkedIn groups that you could reach out to. So I really hope that you will try this, that you have nothing to lose. Uh, as long as your email um, and the way that you can find the person's email address is just by going to their website. Uh, and to find their website, you would basically... Um, Let's see here. Click on contact info. So even though I'm not a first degree contact, I'm not directly connected with him, I can click on contact info and usually they will give, um, oh, this person doesn't even give a website, but I can of course look at this person has links in there, but this person should have put websites in here. But I can go on Twitter and try to find the website there and find their email address and contact them from there. Anyway. Um, there are there's so much potential for you just for reaching out to LinkedIn group owners if you are kind and supportive and and sincere in your outreach if you're direct about what you're trying to offer don't be afraid do not be afraid right uh, as a LinkedIn group owner I've been a LinkedIn group owner for about 10 years and, and there are so few people in 10 years who have ever reached out to me in this kind of way and people who have have been effective Right, but now, just because I'm making this video, I imagine lots of people want to reach out to me about my LinkedIn groups. Uh, please reach out to other people first, because I am extremely, because I teach this stuff about partnering, I'm extremely uh, selective about who I say yes to. So uh, if you're gonna reach out to me, I'm probably gonna say no. But please do reach out to other LinkedIn group owners. There are probably very few people reaching out to them, because everybody's so shy and nobody has, uh, nobody has this training that I'm giving you, right? Or very few people do. So reach out in a sincere way and honestly when you're reaching out be in a way of service to that person I would be in a way of serving how can I really be 
uh, be of help to this person and to their audience, okay? And if I don't hear back, it's okay. I can wait another month or two or three months or six months and reach out again. There is no harm done in reaching out. The, the only reason I would stop reaching out to someone is if they email me back and says, please stop emailing me, right? And I wouldn't email them once a week. That would be too um, pushy. But I would email them maybe once every three to six months, you know, the same person. Uh, that's not, I don't think that's too, that's too pushy. And again, if I'm reaching out in a way, again, if I feel it's sincerely helping them and their audience, why not right on, right? Okay. Um, anyway, I have more examples in here, uh, uh, literal, actual examples of what people wrote. And this is a literal example, uh, graciously shared by Eileen Kennedy. You can go and look at her website, kennedyfengshui.com. Check her out. Um, and then the result, you know, you can see result. Um, she's interested seeing my webinar, wants to promote it. So that's a that's an example of she made a successful connection with that person. Um, this is an example. This is actually my own example here. All right. So these are actual examples you'll see throughout the rest of this document. And I really encourage you to read this document, look at what example resonates with you, and customize it. One more thing I'll, I'll say is this. Let's say you found this example to be, to be interesting and compelling and you're going to modify this letter and, and send it out to a bunch of people. Please uh, consider reaching out. You, whatever example you're going to use, reach out to at least 20. So if I'm going to reach out to LinkedIn group owners, I'm going to reach out to at least 20 group owners before you expect to kind of hear any, anything back, okay? Uh, one out of 20 is, if, if you get one out of 20 people to say yes to you, that is a successful result. Uh, I'm not going to say what pers what ratio is you should look for because different people, the way they phrase it will be different and they're going to get different. Maybe it's one out of every three is going to say yes, right? Uh, so I'm not going to kind of give you that expectation. But I'm going to say reach out to 20 and every if you're going to reach out to 20, then every five people you reach out to, it's time to slightly modify your letter again, okay? So that every five you reach out to slightly modify your letter to try something different, reach out to another five with that new version, modify it slightly again, reach out to another five. So by the time you reach out to 20, you've tried four different, uh, slightly different versions of the letter. So you can see which version works better. And then wait, wait a week or two and see what kind of results you get back and then see which of your four versions worked best and then use that version for the next 20. You know. Um, you know, try try that one, and then modify that version a little bit more for the next uh, for the next five or ten, etc. So, in other words, always be modifying after you reach out to a batch. Modify your letter, modify your outreach method, so that you can keep testing to see what seems to work well. If you do this, you will almost certainly get people saying yes. Let's talk. Let's see how we can work together to uh, really benefit both of our audiences. Or again, you don't, I've, I've already said in another video, you don't have to promote them back, right? Look at promotional partnerships as one person really benefiting someone's audience. And only if they can really benefit your audience does it make sense to promote them back. But you're in this case, you're really reaching out to, prom to, to have them promote your thing because it's a real benefit to their audience. Make sense? So I look forward to hearing if you have any questions about it, please don't hesitate to ask your questions. And if you get any results that you'd like to share, if you uh, want to be as generous as you know Eileen Kennedy, as, as an example, to share what letter worked for you, then I would be, uh, let me know and I, I'd be happy to, uh, to include it in this document probably. So that would be a good way to reach out to me about uh, about find, about a, an example that worked for you and that you'd like for me to include it. I will, of course, link it to your website as well. All right, so until the next video, I look forward to um, seeing you apply this and I look forward to seeing this help you grow your business and your collaborations.